Natan, how have you been able to finance the company to date and to grow it, to dedicate time to it? How have you uh, divided your efforts between real estate investing, which is also a way to generate revenue and income, uh, versus your own startup now? Uh, so deal check actually is uh, still fully uh, self and, and a little private funded, but mostly self funded by myself and then a few kind of friends and family. So we never had a public round or, or any larger investment round. Um, and I've always adapted a uh, kind of a very, very lean philosophy. So we uh, work hard to minimize expenses. Our, our biggest expenses is payroll and uh, you know, kind of supporting our employees by far, but yeah, everything else would, right now. Uh, we're at five, five people team. So still a very small team, but the company is profitable. Uh, we're generating, you know, so decent revenue, I think for our size. So uh, it's uh, kind of financed. We financed our own growth uh, and we especially focused on running very lean through automation, kind of leveraging existing technologies for things like customer support and low cost marketing. Uh, and we, we actually have a very, very small budget. Uh, and I know that, you know, kind of in the startup world, probably, you know, in the circles that you hang out, this may be a big no, no. Uh, and we could have grown a hundred times faster. Have we taken on capital, um, you know, investor funding and, Perhaps that is the case. Uh, we just, I just chose not to do this, uh, at least at this stage in our growth, because I like how we're growing. Um, I like that uh, we're still very cognizant of kind of the processes that we have in the company. We're able to manage them effectively, uh, you know, instead of scaling to a million users and all of a sudden we're overwhelmed with, you know, with kind of every channel of our company. And at the same time, um, I feel like we also have the time uh, the resources to really still listen to customer feedback, individual customer feedback. I still sometimes get on the phone and talk with individual deal check users to help understand, you know, what it is they want from the software, how can we improve it? Um, and I think this relentless focus on kind of product improvement, uh, very much driven by the user uh, is, is really paying off in our strategy. And I'd rather have that, you know, focus on the customer focus on the feedback than have, you know, a hundred times faster growth, at least at this stage, you know, uh, it's, you know, perhaps uh, a few years from now, we may look at reaching even a broader audience uh, and, and maybe take on some funding to help us get there. But uh, at this stage, I think we're, we're in a very good place in terms of product market fit and our kind of market share in, in the global, uh, you know, kind of in the U.S. property analysis market. So, yeah, and so, keep on know, trucking. I'm absolutely torn. The entrepreneur inside me absolutely resonates with what you're saying. Um, you don't need to go raise a ton of VC funding. You should be there on the front lines talking to customers. I know many entrepreneurs firsthand who still talk to customers on a daily basis. Um, and it's a hallmark I've seen of successful entrepreneurs. I used to uh, annoy the co-founders of Lyft, the ride-sharing app, even mm -hmm. after they raised funding. They would still respond to my text messages complaining about the service I had or whatever. Um, and That's those awesome. are the companies that are really, really resilient because they're focused around customers and loyalty. But then there's the VC side of me that sees so much disruption ahead, so much change. And... We're living in a very interesting time right now with data. If you could infuse more data into your platform, if you could apply more machine learning, take artificial intelligence, have predictive analysis, you could go and even build your own real estate fund. You could go and become one of the big private equity acquirers yourself. So, you know, there's so much you can do, uh, but good things last. And I think uh, the best companies, even Fortune 500 companies, are the ones that grow slowly and sustainably rather than get rich quick, die fast, you know, up and downs. And there is such a thing as having right, too right. much money and the uh, pressures you get by taking venture capital and being um, beholden to the investor requirements, yeah, yeah. basically. So I'm sure you've thought a lot about that. This is the PropTech VC Podcast. We give you unique insights into how innovative technologies are disrupting real estate. 
We interview top entrepreneurs, investors, and knowledgeable experts to share the inside scoop in this fast-moving industry. It's hosted by leading prop tech VC, Zane Jaffer.